And good morning, 17 minutes after 9 o'clock on this Friday morning. Joining us in studio, and I'm hoping I can do this right from uh, right to left, uh, Miss uh, uh, Kathy Crossley, mm-hmm. okay, Stacey Wolkowitz, mm-hmm. Tracy De La Rosa, yeah. and you must be Larry. I am. All right. Am. Larry <laughs> Marker. Yeah. Larry Marker, Concerned yes. citizens for New Mexico. How are you guys doing this morning? Oh, we doing are well. good. Doing you guys are uh, you guys are quite busy. You guys are uh, pounding the pavement, hitting the streets. I like yeah. I like the fact that you guys are doing this from the ground up. It's... We actually got in last night uh, yeah. about one o'clock from Al Mogordo. Really? So, okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. We're, we're and on she the probably left Al Mogordo about twelve thirty. <laughs> 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 the flash. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, hey, you know what? Gosh. There's a reason there's a bottom of the gas pedal. It's supposed to go down that far. Yeah, exactly. That's supposed to. Exactly. And, and all, all three See of them spend a lot go. of time there, I promise you. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Well, you guys are you guys are busy. It's, I mean, it's a busy season, right? We're, we're heading into a, an election. Uh, yeah. And I said this the other day. This is maybe the most important election that New Mexico has faced in Absolutely. in a generation. Right. Amen. Things are things are, are could change one way or the other. I know we got a Wilson from home improvement situation going on with this this screen. That's he's just okay. see, he's just seen the top <laughs> half of my head. Uh, but uh, but yeah, this is a this is an important one. And and you guys are yeah. uh, knocking on doors, hitting the pavement, doing things from the ground up. You don't need we are. you're not, you know, supported by a, a giant pack or or you yeah. know some some organization. <laughs> Y'all are doing this from the ground up and it's I, I respect it. Oh, thank you. We are a grassroots organization. We're just people in the community who want to see our community and our state do better and thrive. And we support independent candidates that, um, you know, always before people have been skeptical of independent candidates. But at this point, our motto is kind of nobody's coming to save us. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to empower ourselves to step up and serve. And um, we've got Larry Marker, who the state basically tried to put him out of business with his small independent oil and gas production. And so he learned how to defend himself. And he defends others. He defends um, freedom, liberty on every level. And so he's our go to guy. So so Larry, the story the story goes that that basically your employer was forcing you or mandating you guys to take take the, the vaccination, correct? No. Okay, that's, no. Oh, that's, that's yeah, something. Yeah, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm yeah. so sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting ahead of myself. So, yeah. so okay, so let, let's talk about your story then, Larry. What, yeah. uh, what, what happened? Okay, real quick, in a nutshell, I'm an independent oil and gas producer from okay. around here. I was born and raised in Roswell. Actually, I was born in Hobbs, but I raised around Roswell. Independent oil and gas producer, been in different businesses, but the last 12 years, oil and gas. Me and the state of New Mexico and the BLM got crossways here several years ago when I, I – uh, I discovered the uh, the pleasure of, of dealing with bureaucrats and, mm-hmm. and their overreach and their abuse of discretion, and that that has that has continued on for the last five or six years. A lot of fights. So anyway, I decided to run for New Mexico Commissioner of Public Lands. Okay, and that's where I'm at right now. I'm campaigning all over the state. When I get done here, I'll head back to Santa Fe and Albuquerque, and I got to be in, up in Gallup in the morning. Okay. And then we'll be back in Carlsbad on Sunday. But uh, that's a, a lot of miles. Stacy and then Stacy has has uh, the Chavez, the concerned citizens for New Mexico, they've supported all of the crazy stuff I've done, the citizens' petition for grand jury, the various different lawsuits against the Department of Health, the petitions for writ of mandamus, you name it. We we pretty well run at it, but I've decided I'm just going to have to pick up the uh, an elected office. And, go, and if I can't change things from down here, then I'm just going to have to go up Santa Fe and get in their hip pocket sure. with them. If, if a phone call is not going to do it, then doggone it, you're just going to have to do it yourself. I, just, yeah, just, I, just, I like that. Roll your sleeves up and get it done. Yeah. Just go you want get it done right, them. do it yourself. That's anyway, right. this, this is more about the deal, the election integrity and stuff, and, and so we're going to turn, because I could spend yeah. three or four hours here, so <laughs> yeah. we're just, we're just going to let Stacy take it well, from and, here. Uh, but but I, I do I do admire the fact that, that you're you're passionate about about you know what what you stand for, and, and that's what's going to get things done, really, is, right. is you know, citizens standing up and, and actually taking action. Mm-hmm. One thing Not really important for us to do is it, action. That, because what we hear a lot is people come to us and say, we just don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. They don't have the leadership. They don't have people saying, okay, if you want to get this done, this is, you know, your option, you know, A, B, and C. Mm-hmm. You have to follow mm-hmm. these steps. You have to do it the right way. So we have to play the game. Sure. And people just don't know how to do that, and that's what we're trying to do. And yeah. this is the group to get things done, I guarantee you. I can I can tell you guys are movers and shakers. <laughs> just the amount of miles that just the amount of miles that you've covered in just uh you know the past 
few you know month month or so it's it's impressive yeah so so yeah let's let's so, let's talk about the event you guys have coming up well she brought up a point because um larry is our go-to guy for when there are problems like all of a sudden during covid they were threatening our jobs they were threatening my husband is a medical provider and um he literally had a week to decide if he was going to take this or not or how to get an exemption yeah. Um, he stepped up and we had a room full of people and we told him, here's what you do. One, two, three. Here's how you, we put exemptions online. We did all this stuff for them. So what she's talking about is we try to come up with solutions, practical solutions people can take themselves, which leads me to Professor Clements out of NMSU. Mm -hmm. He first uh, spoke up, that's the first time I saw him, was speaking up for feet. Okay, I can't talk. Free speech on the community campus, you know, sure. free discourse because they were trying to shut down any talk of Trump or anything like that. Sure. Then he moved on to um, we should have medical freedom. And they ended up firing him for not taking the vaccine. They, they just that doesn't, that doesn't feel legal. I know. Exactly. He's a law professor. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you done yeah. messed up now, didn't you? I know. <laughs> and so, you know, well, that's what we were saying is, okay, you uh, come at us. Now, I think you brought it up. Now you're going to give us lots of time right. to figure out how we want to fight back, how we want to empower others. And he and his wife, who is an engineer, <laughs> they have taken up the mantle of, finding out about election integrity and how we can go forward in our elections. I think everyone has by now seen the 2000 mules, you know, with the uh, vulnerability of absentee ballots. Well, now he is out with a new film called Standing in the Gap, which we're premiering this Monday okay. at 530, 1009 West Alameda. Um, he's going to be here in person to do a Q&A on what he has discovered about vulnerability with our voting machines. Okay. And these two ladies are here to talk about an event that happened last night that ties in with this because he actually did an audit. Um, he's been doing them around the state, mm -hmm. he and his wife, and they presented evidence in Otero to the county commission. That's So they've that's got an a, exciting story for you oh, of what okay. happened down I, there. It sounds like a harrowing <laughs> tale. I'm curious because that's... That was a, a, a huge hot button issue, and it sounds yeah, like you've actually is. got the yeah. evidence that that nobody else was able to find. Basically. Right? Yes. Yeah. Y'all trumped the my pillow guy. I know. I'm okay. impressed. <laughs> He's on our side. I We're know. On his side. Exactly. I know. But, but he couldn't he couldn't produce the, the evidence, and it sounds like you guys did. But okay, so let's talk about what happened last night. Well, last yeah. night was a big presentation. They presented their final findings of the audit. I was actually a canvasser. Kathy was as well. We went door to door to every single person in Otero County. Man. We didn't ask who they voted for. We just asked their method of voting. Did you vote in person? You know, and there were discrepancies that we saw ourselves. They uh -huh. presented a 500 page report last night of wow. beautiful amounts of evidence to the commission asking them to get rid of voting machines in Otero County. Well, the county commissioners were actually under threat of being imprisoned today they could go to jail this morning because they voted to get rid of those machines again oh, they stood wow. their ground really? last night really? yes. and um coy griffin and the other two said even under threat of jail where was the two to one vote two to one and coy and vicky stood up and they said we're gonna this is our job to serve the people the people want to get rid of these dominion machines here's the evidence mm -hmm. you know and i didn't see the other side coming back with a rebuttal no, yeah. is it there? where's their evidence is sure. what we wanted to see, and it just wasn't there. Sounds like it, they, so they put it to a vote, you're saying. Yes. The voting yes. machine thing was put to a vote. <laughs> yes. And, uh, yes. Yeah, yes. It's just, In this, person. This, this whole thing has just been a, been a big mess. Exactly. I mean, and, and you're, you're absolutely right. You, you touched on something with, with the vulnerability of absentee ballots, uh, that, you know, when, you, when you're mm -hmm. putting your vote out in the air for any number of time before it gets to the hands it's supposed to, right. who knows what could happen. Right. Yeah. And there needs to be that chain of custody. Mm -hmm. And over in Otero County, they use drop boxes. Right. And so their vote last night included get rid of the drop boxes. And be, we did not use them here in Chavez County. Right. And so they were saying, some of them were saying um, that it's, it's mandatory because the Secretary of State said you've got to use these that drop was boxes. The mm -hmm. That and was the argument. Well, what I don't understand is why don't all 
Americans want to see the evidence because we're all at stake here. Like, no matter what side you're on, you want to know that your candidate has yeah. a fair shot Absolutely. in the election. So Absolutely. I don't understand when people are doubling down saying, oh, no, there's no vulnerability whatsoever. Well, let's get to the let's, core let's, of it. Let's find let's out for look sure. At it. Find yeah. out. How, and, how, how can you be so sure? Let's, yeah. let's find out for sure. And exactly. they will not let the group do a forensic audit where they can bring in teams of IT people mm -hmm. and look into it. Let's delve in to see, is it is it working the way sure. it's supposed to? Basically, their, their testing methods are their methods yes. that, mm -hmm. that they're approving. That is, that is correct, and it was brought up last night that the two organizations, correct me if I'm wrong, that test it are, are the ones that create it. They're that testing the themselves. Yeah. So you think yeah. they're going to come up and say, oh, you know what? Um, it's kind of like how, uh, sort of a, a parallel, it's kind of like how the, the McDonald's ice cream machines, the, the, the tailor, you know, that they, they can only be uh, be worked on by tailor representatives. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. They're, they're, exactly. Exactly. they're, they're, they're kind of like, on. Yeah. Exactly. They, they figured out how to, how to run that run that industry. I shouldn't have said that on a McDonald's one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to just lose as a sponsor. <laughs> Anyways, this is any of our three McDonald's here in Roswell. Download uh, the app. It's uh, it's fantastic. It'll save you a ton of money, too. <laughs> I'm loving it. Well uh, done. See uh, synergy. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but, uh, but moving on. But uh, but uh, so yeah, this is this is absolutely something that that needs to be addressed, and it yeah. needs to be addressed ultimately before you know the next <laughs> the big next election cycle. Election. Exactly. The big deal last night was what they were in the 2020 election. There's a rule: you have to keep all the ballots and information for 22 months. Mm -hmm. We hit 22 months on September 3rd. Okay, mm -hmm. so all then, of everything will be destroyed. Destroyed. If yes. we don't look at everything before, okay. See, then, I thought you'd be, no, 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 it's unveiled. Uh, okay. Yes. No. If, oh, if that's we don't, if we don't look yeah. at it by then, if we don't take a stand and say we need to look at 2020, mm -hmm. they can legally destroy every ballot, every backup. So it's gone. and we've done. The we've actually practice. this group has gone in and, and we've canvassed. We haven't canvassed. We have um, copied the um, the ballots themselves. And in absentee, we, we copy the ballots and the envelope. So you can tell whether, sure. okay, if well, it was, the, well in Otero yeah. County, there were, they were 516 or something off. Yeah. It was over 500 ballots, or was it 800? I, maybe 800. It was, 800. It was a lot. Wow. It was a lot. Mm -hmm. Enough to make and that's, you notice. Enough to make a major difference because there, yes. were, uh, there were elections, you know, local local yes. elections that were decided there, by. There was there, a vote divided, a divided small, by 11. A very small yeah. margin. Yeah, it was only 11 votes. Yes. Yeah, they're in Otero. Right. Exactly. So we yeah. need to look at it. Every country. legal vote should count. I mean, France does it in one day. 32 million people vote. They get out. They do it with paper. Mm -hmm. They count it then, and they know within 30 minutes who's won. 32 million people. If they can do that there, yeah. I think we can do it here. Well, if they Keep can figure simple. out who won the lottery in, in 30 yeah. seconds. <laughs> well, yeah, but at right. that, you've got everybody frantically looking at their tickets. Right, right. At right. that point, the research is being done. Yeah. We're, all, we're all investigating. Well, and that's we want people to be excited like that to vote. Sure. The way you say they look at a lottery ticket, Absolutely. that's how they should look at their opportunity to vote. I, I agree because I this, is their that, this is our exactly, chance to make exactly. a real change. Exactly. Well, and, and she brings up another point because now people are skeptical. They're even nervous right. mm -hmm. to go out and vote because and they they're not sure that their vote will count. Sure. When I'm out campaigning, that's the biggest issue I run into. People tell me I'm just simply right. not going to vote. Well, right. that, that's not the way to do it. We, we need to do something to, to show these people that we do have confidence, that they can have confidence in our election system. Absolutely. Well, and, and until we can get into the machines, and if I were the Secretary of State and everything was above board, I wasn't afraid of finding out whatever. Yeah. I would say, come on, if I've bring got your nothing team. To hide, exactly. Yeah. Bring your team. Look at it. I will I will open the machines. Let's go through it. Mm -hmm. Let's let's find out because the Secretary of State needs to know as well. Sure. Mm -hmm. It's it's scary, you know, to me as as a voter that to know that the one way that I have to speak up exactly isn't necessarily being, you know, used properly. That's 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 terrifying. Yeah. So well, that voice is being taken away. Right. And and I don't want to create more uh, fear about our votes, but here in Chavez County in the 2020 election, when they were running a, a small audit that's mandatory, mm -hmm. I think they um, checked over 300 ballots out of the 22,000 that was cast sure. or whatever. 
she said there were our county clerk, which I trust completely. It's not the county clerks that we think right. are doing anything. Sure. I think it's within the machine. But she said there was one vote that was flipped, and they ran it three times. They're hand counting. They ran it three times. Really? But that was not all of the votes. That was a right. sample. That was but a very that, yeah, just small a, just, sample. Exactly. Right. So she called the Secretary of State and got no response. She mm-hmm. called the FBI. They said, we will not get involved. Mm-hmm. Right. It's, it's, and, it's the mindset of, you know, you, you see your kid, you know, you catch your kid doing something wrong. You can bet your bottom dollar they've done that thing wrong 16 times before. You just caught them doing it that one time. Yeah. Right. right. Exactly. Well, and I served as an election <laughs> official and so I did too. Happy. And watching the chain of command here in Chavez County, those girls run a tight ship. Mm -hmm. They know what they're doing. It was my first time doing it, and I just kind of sat back and let the process work. It was easy. They made it so easy for me. But we're fortunate to have that. It's not that way everywhere around the state. Recently in Sandoval County, the guy that we supported for governor, (laughs) Jay Block, Mm -hmm. he's kind of like Larry on the outside, you know, standing up for servanthood and so on. He's a commissioner up there in Sandoval. And um, he was the only one on the commission to say, we don't even have the report yet. We don't even have in front of us what happened in our election, and they're wanting us to certify it. So he voted not to. Sure. Well, now a lady has come forward and testified to fraud that she witnessed happen. And so now the Clements have actually brought a lawsuit up there. So, I mean, this is happening all over the state. They're in different situations in different counties. It's not the same right. everywhere. Right. And and you're not, my, my theory is you're not going to see giant pockets of it. You're going to see little infinitesimal changes all over the place that are happening. So yeah. it's not as noticeable. You know? One thing they were able to prove with their... Um, with their research and with their audit was an algorithm. Mm-hmm. And it was an across the board percentage every that they were able precinct. to show in every precinct. Really? Mm-hmm. Every precinct. And there wow. were a few exceptions, you know what I mean? But that algorithm, and once you look at the charts, it's wild. Okay. I, I, it was way above my, right. way above. But when you, but when you see, when you, when you see, put line, line yes. graph on top of line yes. graph on top of line graph, and you're noticing, oh, there's very little delineation. Yes. yes. So when, you, the Kool-Aid when you combine that with the inflated voter rolls, you know, yeah. New Mexico, they claim New Mexico has 1.3 million registered voters. Sure. There's no way there's that many right. registered voters in New Mexico. You know, in campaign, we do a lot of direct mail stuff like that. Over 40% of the uh, over forty percent of the stuff you send will come back for the wrong address or the wrong person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that actually was in Sandoval County. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. So that, you know, it's a combination of a lot of different things that, that allow that algorithm to work. Mm-hmm. And this all gets complicated, but... But saying all that, we're not telling people don't go vote. Right. You know, for sure, no, go vote. Ma- vote make your machines. voice that's heard. That's more important. For sh- yeah, it's, it's, and it's even more critical point. in places like this where, where we're confident in, in our county clerk. Right. So Bonnie Brainerd, who's also yes. a citizen and works with us. And she's also her, my she's, treasurer. Yes. Of the <laughs> awesome. Too. So <laughs> you know what she did? She did exactly what our group does. She stood up on her own. She went around and asked permission to audit the different counties in the state. And they, to her surprise, said, okay. And oh. so she went around and audited the whole state she on her own. Not, not the whole state, <laughs> right? because there were a lot of uh, counties that that's got to that be wouldn't. that's got to be a moment but where she's like, "They're not going to say." I know. They said yes. I know. <laughs> right? I know. I know. Now yeah. what do I do? Well, yeah. She made her, she made her yeah. brother go help her too. Yeah. <laughs> well, and her well, whole family, her family and her friends, they went with her, and and so they dove right in and. Yeah. That's what concerned citizens is. That's as grassroots as you can get when you're getting the kids involved. Well, I want to point out one thing she said that I will never forget. She gave a little report at a meeting I was at, and she said, don't let this uh, deter you from going to vote, because just like Tracy said, let's overwhelm the Mm -hmm. voting machine. She said, when the turnout is large, it makes it much harder for them to do fraud. Okay, so you back know? to the event that night. We will have people there ready to register people awesome. to vote. We have mm-hmm. third-party agents ready to go. And that's one of those things, even if you're not sure, if you're not sure if you're registered, if you if you had registered yes. before, if you moved, if maybe you're in a different right. district, different ward, you guys are going to be there to answer questions. And, and you can Absolutely. you can always check registries and see it and you know, put people's minds at ease and say it, let them know that you are, you're set. Yeah. Exactly. When, and tell them about your 
your experience with the registrations being yes, changed because exactly. the DMV. Um, the, the voter rolls are really important in keeping, you know, party affiliation separate because in a closed primary that like we have here in New right. Mexico, you have to be a registered a re- member of that party to vote. to vote. Yeah. So people now are able to change their affiliation day of from independent to a major party mm-hmm. in order to participate in the primary. Really? Now, yes. I was um, the person in charge of the same day voter registration at my voting location. Uh-huh. Two separate voters came in, and um, were, they wanted to vote in the Republican primary because they're lifelong Republicans. And whenever they pulled it up, they said, you're not able to vote because you're independent. So they had to come to me, switch from independent to Republican, mm-hmm. and they didn't know. They had never done that. They were lifelong Republicans. So, so the how? How? Hmm. How did their registration I, I mean, it's, it's weird discrepancies. Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. Exactly. (laughs) And I do believe that it has something to do with the DMV, that if you don't, when you go in to renew your license and you don't check Mm -hmm. what affiliation you are, I I think it gets changed. Uh, Go on the Secretary of State website. Make sure your stuff is all on the up and up. You just reminded me I have to redo redo my license in like two weeks. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, make sure you check it. (laughs) I'll I'll definitely check on that one, the party affiliation too, Mm -hmm. for sure. Well, he is, uh, so Clements is associated with a number of national groups now, too, and like Truth. And the My Pillow guy, Truth like you <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yes. Should we start calling him the My Coffee guy yet? <laughs> I mean, my boss ordered, ordered some of the coffee. He says it's pretty doggone good. Oh, really? yeah. pretty good, too. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. my mom I mean, has the slippers. Yeah, they I are good. <laughs> I'm wondering how much money the guy spends on TV ads. Oh, God, it's just, oh, that's that's got to be a big Incredible. chunk. Of it. But, but yeah, so. Uh, but, well, and you know that Mike Lindell is coming out with a streaming report August 20th and 21st, two days. He's going to show all of the evidence that he has amassed. I'd heard that he had something, so, something big planned. He does. He's going to do this. Uh, he's going to do this for. for <clears throat> Two days, you said, basically two days straight? straight. Yeah, just telephoning. Streaming. That's yeah. from Nashville yeah. or something, isn't it? It yeah. is. Yeah. It I is. think the guy really likes to stay up, which is funny because he makes pillows. He yeah, makes, you make sleep products. Go to bed, dude. It, it, it's the quality of the sleep. It's true. The when, you're knocking, when you're knocking out quality sleep in four hours, you can be up for 48. There you go. More, and more Mike Lindell commercials, even on this road. <laughs> I know, right? We're, you know, we're basically doing his job for him. But oh, but it's that's it's awesome. Again, like you said, you know, groups that start as like a you know from the ground up are are kind of growing up to where they're finding people at the national level are seeing this, yes, taking yes. notice, and supporting and supporting it. Yes, and yes. that's that's vital. There's and actually, also, oh, go ahead. Oh, go I'm ahead sorry. I'm sorry. Um, David and his wife have have had threats against their life, and yeah. so is Mike Lindell. And so you know you're over the target when people are coming at you. And even this group that has done the auditing got letters from the Secretary of State and the Attorney General of New Mexico and the Attorney General of the United States oh, wow. to cease and desist all of this and, mm-hmm. and stop saying that there's a problem with the machines. He said, no, I'm not going to. Last night. I'm not going to yeah. do that. Exactly. You know, things got really heated last night in El Gordo. We went through about three hours of evidence oh. and then the... <laughs> Um, the testimony from the public started uh-huh. and they had, of course, people from both sides there sure. and it turned into a screaming match. People were moved by the police. Wow. It was, it was heated. It was heated. The videos on rumble. If anybody wants to watch it, I, I've said this for years. I kind of, and I know this is, it, it kind of bucks against what you're saying, but I kind of wish that Congress and, and, you know, Parliamentary procedure was kind of thrown out the window, and we ran things like they run it in Parliament. Yeah, they, they go scream at nuts in Parliament. <laughs> I would love the Armenians to be that passionate. I think it's healthy. Alamogor. You know, it is. If, if you're going to go back and forth, and you know what, I, back and forth is healthy. Mm-hmm. You can talk to people about issues that you feel differently about. It's you, just you, fine. Or yell know? at people. At, <laughs> you can disagree with people. someone and not I mean, and not think that they're a, you know a murderer or whatever. Exactly, just, exactly. exactly. And that's how we learn. That's how we grow. If you pick up ideas from somebody else yep. you think well wow i never thought of that that's how you grow uh-huh. and it's that's the cool thing about this group is you know people think oh they're just supporting republicans but no we've got people from we have independents on our uh-huh. side libertarians mm-hmm. that follow us sure. 
And if anybody wants to go to work, let's go to work. We'll put you to work. You and any Democrats, county you're at, we'll come Democrats out. We'll help you. We volunteer too. all of this. We don't make money off of it. No. We, we spend, spend a lot of money. Oh, I'm, I'm sure. Just <laughs> on gas. Yes. yes. Gas alone. I mean, yeah. Gas right. alone. Gracious. Gracious. And, it, and my, my car too. is a gas hog. So no. it's not <laughs> easy. Gotta... It's not easy. And I, dr- they... I drive a Chevy Spark for that very reason. Yesterday, I was so happy I filled my tank up for $20. Oh, wow. It was like the happiest day I've had all year. I had one of those as a rental, and I kind of missed the gas prices. Great. The, uh, it was great. Mm-hmm. The grassroots organizations all over New Mexico, Stacy's group, the Concerned Citizens, was actually a really good example of how one of these can get started and continue to grow. Mm-hmm. These organizations are all over the state. Otero County's got a lot. I call them patriot groups, grassroots groups, patriot groups, whatever. They're all, they're sure. all Americans. And they're all different kinds of people. They, they really are. They're not just one political party. Right. No. Mm-hmm. There's conservatives. There's there's some moderate Democrats involved. They don't mm-hmm. talk a lot about being Democrats while they're there. But sure. there's a lot of those guys involved. A lot of independents are showing up. A lot of independents are showing up and are actually a major force in, in politics in New Mexico. They've just always kind of been hidden. But anywhere you want to go, if you want to go help or something, you know, Stacy could, she's got list absolutely lists of, of grassroots organizations all over the state of New Mexico. Lee mm-hmm. County's got some, you know, Protalis has a real strong one. Like I said, Otero County, those, those people Las are on Cruces. fire. They really are. We have a huge Las one. Cruces, and we've yes. got candidates everywhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? We've got Lincoln Elaine County. Allen down in Link, yeah. Lincoln County running as an independent for state representative. Uh-huh. Conservative got, independent. We, well, we, we had, had a, we had a meeting with two Sundays ago. And the Republican Party has finally figured out the base of their party is actually what make up these these grassroots organizations, and they're finally recognizing that. Gladly, I mean, it's a little too late, I'm, I'm hoping. But anyway, they uh, they definitely, they're figuring out that, that the base of their support are these grassroots, and there, there are people. So if you're wondering about what to do, don't, don't feel like you're alone if you think right. something's wrong. Because there are groups like Stacy's here in and, and, and this County. If you're starting to kind of notice, okay, maybe maybe something like I said earlier ain't stu- stirring the Kool Aid, right? This is a chance to ask questions, and and this exactly. and this would be a great place to start. Yeah, because you guys have you guys mm-hmm. have a lot more knowledge than I do. Well, we've got the resources. <laughs> the thing we have is a great team. We've got people. If I need some research done. I know exactly. It's who it's kind of like yeah. each each one of you Using has, has your, your own uh yeah your own set mm-hmm. of skills right. So, Exactly. Mm-hmm. And we combined that. And we've been successful here in yeah. Chavez County. We were able to run two candidates for school board and get them put mm-hmm. on the school board. Awesome. You know, we um, did it at city council, the city council. We judge. did the same thing with a judge race. We did mm-hmm. all of our candidates have done really because we get out and we do the work. Yeah. And, and we, they're planning on getting involved in the legislative session coming up, too. We're, we're really pushing. Very, pushing very towards cool. that. Tracy's going to spend a lot of time in Santa Fe. <laughs> people people are starting to kind of wake up and realize, I've got to do this myself. It's like oh, we said exactly. at the beginning of this conversation. It. Yeah. And, you know, it's you You look at the, you know, you think, oh, I'm, I'm part of a party that's going to get it done for me. But the last two years in New Mexico is Mm-mm. proof alone that, that if you if left unchecked, stuff's going crazy. And I think that's the know? problem with conservative thinking is mm-hmm. people, it's the live and let live. They sit back and as long as you do your thing, I'm going to do my thing. Leave me alone and I'll let you go. Right. We can't right. do that anymore. Yeah. We have to have a voice. Well, the silent the, majority is a real thing. And in the oil and gas industry, there was always retaliation. If you stood up like I stood up, sure. there was always retaliation. People don't believe that until they get involved. But I promise you, in New Mexico, when you stand up and fight, you're going to you're yeah, going to suffer hear about the, it. you're going to suffer the consequences you know it's going to be audits it'll be fines it'll sure. be whatever because well, at that point you're messing with their you know their their lobbyists you're messing with people that are that are you know mm-hmm. helping you know make make decisions and and yeah so when you start playing with people's money that's when they start noticing yeah right. mm-hmm. so you bring up a point there were like 1200 protests i think we were at most of them <laughs> <laughs> or we planned most sure of them. <laughs> But um, (laughs) during the shutdown, you know, we were out there speaking out and we made a difference. Our friend Sarah Smith out of Las Cruces, who is like a natural homeopathic mom, she got in this. She's not so much party political. That's how she started. And yet we worked together on issues. And, you know, when they had us shut down and standing in lines, bread lines, do you know why the governor backed off? It was Sarah Smith's organization of grassroots really? around the state. We got national publicity of these disabled people, elderly people standing out there. We organized to stand in line for them. 
And about two days before we were going to do our event, she said, oh, I'm going to open up Walmart right. for you. Right. So that shows wow. the power of the people. Absolutely. Wouldn't and, happen if it had somebody not stood up and said, this is not right. I know. Exactly. That's, yeah, and that's, especially when it goes national, our governor really doesn't like negative press, if you've noticed. <laughs> so. You know, I think that the, the pandemic really worked in against them because mm. it gave everybody a lot of time. We weren't distracted anymore by yeah. work and school. Right. It was a lot of time to sit back and just look around and say, this is not right. We're watching you guys a lot more closely now, and this is not right. Yeah. So and that's how you can make, you realize that you can make changes starting at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Keep things really, really simple. No start voice at, is too small. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Start at your exactly. precinct level, you know, and you work your way up. You take over the school board. You take over the city and not take over. No. Take, we're not just looking to take over. Take, like take we want, right? we want take it take back. It, take it yeah. back. Like yeah, like yeah. There you go. Find we we, we want to put good police, people that want to serve into place. It's mm -hmm. so important. Mm -hmm. Service to others is such a big deal, and okay. it works. Yeah. People get excited, and I can't tell you how many people came up to us and thanked us because we drove from Roswell to Alamogordo just mm -hmm. to go speak last night, mm -hmm. and people are so appreciative. And if you want to get involved, there's work to be done. Absolutely. There's absolutely. And when we were canvassing over there, um, I was involved with Cloudcroft. Okay. And so you would go door to door. You would have a list. We did not ask them, who did you vote for? Sure. Our questions were, are you so-and-so? Uh, is this your address? How many people vote here? Mm -hmm. And then how did you vote? Did you vote absentee, in person, day of? Um, how did you vote? Sure. And they would answer, and you would be surprised at the number of people that said, well, those people haven't lived here in 15 years, and yet they're still voting. Mm -hmm. Something kind of funny about the two mm -hmm. machines in Cloudcroft, they were able to show they ended up with the exact same number of votes. And that's what Bonnie, yeah, Bonnie said, I want Cloudcroft. <laughs> the exact because same Because every numbers. day they ended with the amount. The same amount, both machines. See, I, I assumed you guys picked Cloudcroft just because it was nice and cool. And <laughs> that, 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 it was cold, actually. Good. Right. I guess it was a little, was a little chilly. But, but yeah, that's that's absolutely crazy that there were that many discrepancies. I'm reminded of the movie uh, Black Sheep. Have you ever seen it with Chris Farley, David Spade from the 90s? Yes. At the end of this movie, this basic thing is happening. You find out that, that the vote, they get, break in and they find the voter registration for the county that they're in. And um, one guy and his... Uh, Father and grandfather all voted for one candidate, but his father and grandfather had been dead for generations. Uh, so it's like they were, they were, you know, dead people were, were voting, and that's how this whole thing kind of unwound. So it's like, this is, I've seen this play out in cinema. Yeah, right, it's, right. it's we're, we're watching yeah. this now. You know, in real time now. It's, yeah, yeah. It's bizarre world. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. it it's is. crazy. I just, I don't know. So, so obviously it starts, uh, well, it starts today, but. We're getting uh, kicking off the party this Monday. And now, uh, tell us again, where is that going to be? Okay, so it is at 1009 West Alameda behind Glenn's Furniture. Okay. That uh, facility there. Sure. And I've watched the film. It's very interesting. They actually show a history from even the Reagan era as to why uh, certain mm -hmm. things have happened, why the conservative side has sort of been crippled more than the other. Um, I found that to be very interesting. I think most of us do not know the history of um, how they've been prevented from standing up or speaking out on election integrity. Mm -hmm. That's no longer the case, and he brings that out. Um, they also show, you know, uh, when they were selling the machines, they show how they pitched them and how they said, oh, yes, they can be accessed from the Internet, and now... The story is no, there's no way right. it can be. So it's very interesting. Um, they do also interview other people like our group mm -hmm. who are taking, you know, steps in their own communities and um, standing up, running for office, doing different things. So we're very fortunate to have David Clemens here because he's traveling like mad. Right. He's just been in Kansas, Nebraska. He's going all over the and place. The media follows him. The Washington Post was there last night. Yes. Really? It was yes. there was actually it was exposed and it was on the Gateway Pundit this morning that the expert that they had presenting evidence showed a Supreme Court um, race in 2020 and he had definite proof that votes had been changed mm -hmm. and it, it was wrong huh. and that's a supreme court position that's sure. huge and these that's, aren't that's just massive. conspiracy theories i mean they're, they're actually <laughs> facts. If, right. if you come out yeah. <laughs> if you come out and watch that and actually watch the facts you know 
Don't even make a judgment. Just come watch the facts and the right. evidence. Right. See the evidence, and you can make up your own decisions. Your own you know, your He's own, there own to own do a Q&A after so that people ask can ask many questions. Them. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you tapped on something real quick. i got to go back. You don't mess around with tinfoil hats around here. We take those seriously, okay? <laughs> Say that. She, she's, forgetting, she's forgetting the part to where guys like me have to go back and apologize for all the conspiracy theory. I used to call conspiracy theory people. I used to call them bunker nuts and stuff. Do you know how hard for me to, to it is for me out. to tell my husband yeah. that he was right? Yeah. 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 Was right. <laughs> yeah you, just, you just spoke for wives all across <laughs> southeast New Mexico. Yeah, we have to, we had to tell the conspiracy theory people that they were right and we're sorry. Right. Yeah. Know? That's a that's that's a tough one to to, to get to. We're uh, we're coming up on the end of the hour, so let's. Uh, Let's hit the uh, the info real quick. So it's uh, 1009 West Alameda. It's this Monday, 5.30 uh, p.m. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, the if, film's about an hour and a half. And then David Clements will do a Q&A after. It's after. a free event, so mm -hmm. you don't have to pay for it. I mean, right. Just if you want to support us, please feel free. If you want to come and volunteer with us, Absolutely. that's even better. Mm -hmm. You know, boots on the ground is better than that's, money in your pocket. That's what we've been saying this All whole time. Days. The only way that things are going to get done is if you stand up and get it done yourself. Exactly. So our exactly. new motto is empower you yourself to save yourself because no one else is coming no sure. one's coming to rescue us we're gonna have to do the work ourselves right. and the best way to do that is educate yourself go to yes. things like this you yep. know, study read every book you possibly can go to watch every movie what just just educate yourself We've got and i do want to <laughs> i do want to point out real quick they do not get paid for this they have volunteered all of their time really aaron said last night that's david's wife she said, I have spent eight months doing research, working 15-hour days. Oh, my gosh. And they have three little kids. Well, he and ruined his career doing this. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Well, so you got to start building a new one. <laughs> I know. Right. I guess, right. I guess uh, activist so. it is. Uh, well, ladies, thank you so much for your time. Uh, this, mm. this has been a, an informative <laughs> hour, and I, I feel like we've, uh, you know, people are, are listening. People are listening and people are ready to stand up and talk. I hope talk. so. I hope yeah. they come out and see us. Hope we see you Monday night. 1009 West Alameda, 5.30 p.m. Uh, if folks want more information, uh, where do they find you guys online? Do you guys have a Facebook page? We're on page? Facebook, Concerned Excellent. Citizens for New Mexico. Just send us a request. It's a private group, but yeah. we'll listen. We're all over the place, so sure. mm -hmm. you'll find us. There you go. Concerned Citizens for New Mexico on Facebook. Ladies and uh, Larry, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank I, you. I realized I was like, wait, ladies and Larry. <laughs> thank you guys so much for your time. <laughs> and an open door, too. Whenever you guys are back in the area, come on back. Perfect. Oh, thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Six minutes away from 10 o'clock. Let's get you up to date.